There's something in every movie that, that there's a one-liner that, that just seals the show. All right? Seals the show. Uh, there's one in the Terminator where it says, I'll be back. Y'all remember that? Yes. I'll be back. I, I, I couldn't say it like that yet, but you know the movie, Tim Trumpy. Uh, what about Oslo Visa? Baby. Come on, y'all walk with me, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, these these one liners that are in movies. Uh, what about this? May the force be with you. Yeah. Uh, that's all. Some of y'all know about that. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. How about, uh, as God is my witness, I will never be hungry again. What about that? Going with the wind. You got to be a little season to catch on to that. Hey man, when I saw that, I said, what in the world? Yeah. How about this? Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy ride. That's all about us. You look like I'm okay. This is something that we, we, we would talk about in the streets. And, and, and as little kids, we would talk about this one. Keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Amen, somebody. Or how about the wisdom of Oz where there's no place like home. There are a, a lot of one-liners that are in movies that we remember. Uh, they, they, the trailer would only show the one-liner. Uh, they would they would put emphasis on that one-liner, but people would remember that one-liner and attach it to that movie, and it will always be a memory for those who know. There's some one liners in the Bible. There's some one liners in the Bible. Jesus has one of these one, these one liners uh, where he says, Get thee behind me, Satan. Yes. Certain things that he says. How about on the cross uh, uh, where he or when they when they're beating him and he says, he says, So Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. How about Eli, Eli, Sabachthani? Yeah, yeah. Which means, God, why have I forsaken me? There's some one-liners in the Bible that believers should be able to remember. Even in tough times, you should be able to remember some of these one-liners that will help you get through some situations. Yeah. It's even one that would say, the Lord he is my shepherd. You don't even have to go no further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the fact that you said that this brought my mind into a uh, chapter where I remember that all oh, God is my shepherd. And then you go to add on, I shall not walk. There's some one-liners in the Bible that, that we can hone in on, we can grab, we can push towards whatever we're going through, whatever we're dealing with. And here, John, at the end of the Bible, before it says the end, he says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. That's what he says at the end. How do we look at that tonight? To know that through all the history of the Bible, through all the prophets and the up and down that Israel had experienced, through all the blessings and all the curses that are shown in the Bible, through all the prophecy, through all of Jesus' teaching, through all of the healing and, and all the raising of the dead, through all of, of, of the preaching and going out and saving those and coming for those who are lost. Putting those in their place within their battle and others that shown in the Bible. That he came unto his own and they didn't receive him. But for those that did receive him, he gave them power to be sons and daughters of God. Think about that and knowing that at the end, John says in his last words, 
that the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that it be with you all. What is it about this grace? That no matter where we are in life, this grace is timeless. We are, what, what, how do we think about God's grace through Jesus Christ that is timeless? That even my grandkids who are not even thought of yet will have a change. Even, even the relationship that hasn't come yet will have a chance. The prayers of the righteous for those who are lost will have a chance. He says that the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he says that grace, not man's grace, not what you uh, make of his grace, but that the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ one translation even says, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. What does it mean to have grace to be with you? The word grace, one can look at it from a biblical understanding, that it has mercy, it has steadfast love, it has compassion, it has kindness, it has favor, it has good will. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to cover me, Lord, I need to see your steadfast love. For you to cover me, I need to see your mercy. I need to see your compassion. I need to see your kindness. I need to see your goodwill because of the grace. When God said that he loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus shows that. He shows that. And so this grace, of course, it deals with mercy, which is a Christian's grace. It deals with steadfast, which is unwavering, loyal love that is enduring and constant. Maybe unwavering and, and loyal love that is enduring and constant. Be with you all. Maybe compassion, which is a deep feeling of empathy and, and concern for suffering of others, often uh, accompanied by a desire of help, that be of Jesus Christ, let that be with you all. Yeah. 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 If you was wondering how you got through the day, if you was wondering how you got through all these years, if you wondered how you got through COVID, His steadfast love, his unwavering, and his loyal love that is enduring and constant. He says, the kindness, the acts of generosity, the consideration, the concern for others. That's what Jesus gives. Jesus gives that. John is saying, let that grace be with you all. This is better than money. Yeah. It's even better than time. When you got God's grace, you have this kindness, you have this generosity, you have this consideration, you have this concern for you. When you have God's grace, you have this favor. Which means that looking kindly upon someone and treating someone with special regard. Ah, uh, I know we sing this song, I forget how it goes. We always say that he knows my name. Yeah. He knows my name. There's people who actually know my name. They, they, they know all my name. They know the first, the middle, and the last. Name. But it ain't nothing like when Jesus called me. I know if Mama called me and I'm in trouble, then she's going to say my whole name. I don't know if that's a whole school thing or what. But I know if I'm in trouble. But when Jesus calls my name, there's a difference than anyone else who calls my name. John says, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all. 
home to that understand that when we look at the grace of God, we cannot look at it as just another word. We just can't look at it as, hey, listen, yeah, I'm going to get that anyway. No, we can't look at it like that. But John is saying that look at what you were getting. There's a whole lot wrapped up in God's grace. And Jesus shows This favor that God gives to Jesus Christ is not a result of human merit or any achievement that you have achieved. And if I may add to that, the only reason why you achieve it is because God made it so. That's his grace. So that you step above what people say you should have been cast out. To have you rise above the lack there is on the inside of you because you thought yourself you couldn't do it. But his grace is now, I'm going to show you that you can do it through me. Amen. And it's good will when we look at God's grace. More quality that represents righteousness, virtue, and benevolence of one's own desire. God desires the will for us. John says that the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that it be with you all. That it be with you, not follow you, not go before you. Not come on somebody else that you with. It said to be with you. You know what it feels like to have somebody with you? You gotta see it. Even though they're not right there, you know that you got somebody with you. Somebody you can call, somebody you can lean on, and, and somebody, it, all it takes is gonna be a phone call, but, but you got somebody with you. Even if it seems like y'all are long, you can call somebody, they're going to be right here. John is saying that the grace is that. That it's with you. How do we look at grace? How do we look at what God has given us that the angels say, what is it about man that you go down there and see about him? Have you noticed that God comes out and He's seen about us? That He places His grace upon us? There's a thing that we should have got a long time ago that He said, no, we're going to let that one slide. And thanks to God, even where my people is right now, God's grace is on us. When we look at God's grace, we look at it from this understanding that His grace is used to describe God or in Christ in their merciful character and actions toward humankind, which is shown in the New Testament. God or Christ shows His merciful kindness, His merciful character. There's a character about God that, that you must understand. What you should have gotten, you didn't get because God's character of being gracious amongst us, he shows it. And he reminds us that that could have been worse. That could have been worse. This morning I was uh, on my way to work, and here I am, I'm, I'm, I'm at the light. And, I'm, and, and where I am at the light, you may have been here, uh, where I'm at the light and... and I'm on the far left, but I need to get over to the far right. And coming up to this light, uh, the people who were riding next to me, they were going too slow in the right lane. So I get over to the left, like, okay, I'm going to be up first, and then I'll beat y'all over into the right lane. And the church said, hey, amen. <laughs> because we all have been there where, hey, y'all driving too slow, I got to get where I'm going. And I'm at the light, and my mind is on getting over to the right lane so I can, I can make an exit. And, um, and in my, I wasn't looking at the light, but in my peripheral, I saw a green light. But it was a turning light, and I was going straight. And before I know it, I hit the gas, and when I looked up, I saw red light and I had to stop. I was in the middle 
one room of the intersection. And there was a school bus that was getting ready to turn. And I don't know what took their attention away from turning. But when I looked up, they were still at a stop. And, when, and then they went on and, and turned in front of me and went on their way. And here I am, I'm dropping off like the Lord. That could have been worse. That was his grace. Because my mind was on something else. And, and thanks to God, it's not that um, I did something wrong. But that I was thinking about getting over. We all have been thinking about something. And here he is, you just think your mind on something. And you're like, oh man, oh Lord, that could have been worse. But his grace. It covered me. The people that I was in, that made me and other people around me, that made me have been worse. But it's grace. Let alone have a fight with insurance about trying to pay for something. They don't want to pay for nothing. That's a whole other side of it. Oh, we all deal with that. But to know that his grace extends as mercy to his people. The NIV says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus, be with God's people, be with his people. We are his people. And the sheep of his pasture, that, that's who we are. And when he had, when he shows his grace, come from it is mercy. What well, we should have gotten we didn't get. All because of his grace. And thanks to God, you already know that we ain't done good. Even Jesus said, why do you call me good? The only good one is God the Father. But his mercy, it extends from his grace. Oh man, y'all gotta catch that. You gotta catch that. That his mercy extends from his grace. Even when sin is on you, his mercy and sin is on his grace. His mercy will, will make you think about, Lord, I ain't no good. I should have been there a long time ago. But because you allow your mercy to extend from your grace, y'all don't have to see this. John is saying in the last church in the Bible, when it's all said and done, yes. 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 my God, yes. the grace yes. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ yes. be with you all. When it's all said and done, yes. when it all went down the, the, the 42 generations, when we have seen that he died on the cross, that he rose from the dead, when we have gone to all of that, he says, that's a be of grace. The grace of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ be with you all. His mercies, it will extend, it extends from his grace. Sin from his grace. May I encourage you on tonight that if God can, uh, if, if God can have his son, can have his son show grace. If we all believe us in Christ, we should be showing sure grace. Amen. Amen. Your reason for letting that slide should, should be because I had to grab some of his grace. And let mercy come out. Mm -hmm. I didn't go there with you because I had to grab some of his grace. Yeah. And let mercy come out. Yeah, I have, I don't want to, but I got to. Because of his grace, mercy came out. All I'm trying to say is that if we all believe in Christ, we have to show that we are. 
Jesus said that uh, they may know that you're my disciple, that the love that you have for, for another. Yeah? Now that love, we should be showing God's grace. John goes on to say uh, that we can pull out this, 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 this last verse, uh, his one line, that the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people, but that the gracious and merciful behavior of a more powerful person toward others. Thanks, God. There's a need for us to take what God has given us in his word and allow it to empower us where we can be merciful, that we can have a merciful behavior to those that we have. He says, the grace of our Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, be with us all. The grace, the power to actually give mercy to somebody who don't deserve it. The power to have a merciful behavior to those that we deal with. Can we do it? Can we have that type of power? Can we have that type of encouragement? Can we have that type of smile, that type of handshake, that type of hug, that type of greeting, that type of farewell, that it is a merciful behavior toward everyone that we encounter? You have to understand this one line. On the surface, you would say, oh, he's just saying that the, that the grace of, of Jesus Christ. Yeah, the grace that, that Jesus died on the cross and that he you know, was buried and that he was uh, raised from the dead by, by God the Father. And, and you know, I get you saying, no, 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 no. When you look at grace, uh, there's, a, there's a merciful behavior that one has to have. One has to have this merciful behavior that when you walk, you look like him. When you talk, you talk like him. When you feel, you feel like him. Oh, God. You got to get that feeling because when he was in the garden, he said, Lord, Father, let this cup pass from me. Then he says, but not my will, but thine will be done. Yeah, that's the sort of way you gotta feel about things. I gotta feel like like Jesus felt. That Lord, I really don't want to deal with them, but if you say I got to, then I'm gonna go ahead and, and get right. There's a there's a merciful behavior, a, a gracious behavior of a more powerful person. You become more powerful than the person who is not trying to be merciful. You become more powerful than them. When you show a merciful behavior. The Lord said that Venus is mine. Oh yeah, you, you they don't think that, that they are getting over and all. That belongs to me. I, I, I'll take care of that. Yeah, parents just, parents say it all the time. No, don't worry about it. I, I, I want to do you today. And if they won't listen, they won't have to deal with me. I left you in charge. And so God says that, that this is mine. I will deal with those who come against the word I've given you. If I give you the word to, to have a merciful behavior and you carry it out, I will deal, deal with them. Oh, my Lord. What type of behavior are we showing? Are we showing our kids? Are we showing those who are babes in Christ? Are we showing them those who haven't come, those who haven't reached in the faith enough to have gone through some things to actually know what certain things mean in the Bible? I think that's fair to say that there are some people in the church who have not, they have not experienced certain things or experienced God in that fashion. Right? Yeah. And the old folks say, well, you ain't live long enough. That's right. That's right. Keep on living. Keep on, living. Keep, keep, keep on getting up. <laughs> and you know exactly, it ain't if, it's when. Yeah. You got a lot of people who haven't experienced a win. Yeah, that's right. 
Big Sir Lord knows what he is going to happen. No, he is going to happen. That's not, he is going to happen. No, there are people right now that's going to win. They can tell you that, no, when that happened, I knew that God came through for me. But those who are more powerful, they have a merciful behavior that they can be towards others. And thanks to God, may I add to you that when you have a merciful behavior, a gracious behavior, people will gravitate to you more. People are looking for real people. And when we look at Jesus Christ, he was as real as he can be. Yeah. In the obedience of what the Father has told him. Yeah. I, love to, I love to stand on facts. I love to stand on facts because when you have facts, you can only argue with facts. It ain't my opinion, it ain't your opinion. It's based on what the facts say. And if the Word says that, that the grace is to be with me. And the fact is that I got to carry this. And if I stand on the fact of the word of God that I have the grace, that means I got to show it. And even when that person don't respond like they're supposed to, I say, well, I did my part. They move on. Third one, great T that when we look at this grace that John is talking about. It's displayed by the Lord toward humankind and by people towards each other. It's displayed. It's shown. We move from having the actual character to now being actually showing. There's one thing to read. There's nothing thing to have application. It can be on the paper all day long, but if you don't implement that in your life, then it's just going to paper. Yeah, that's the last one. It ain't made it on the inside of him. But when you got somebody who it'll make it on the inside of him, oh man, you'll see a whole different person. Change that thing. That's all John is saying. And listen, after all that has been said in this Bible, let that grace of Jesus Christ be with you all. Not a few, not some, but all. If you believe in him, let that grace be with you. If you gonna call me his name, let that grace be with you. Yeah. If you got kids, and if, if you are living, if you can breathe, if your brain can comprehend that there is grace from Jesus Christ, let that be with you. Yeah. And you got God's grace. You walk in, you live it. We become pleasing in His sight. My God. Can I say, ladies, it shouldn't take perfume for you to be pleasing. It shouldn't take for your hair to be done and your nails done and uh, the, the makeup on. And it, it shouldn't take all that for you to be pleasing. But what's in the heart should show up. <laughs> Brothers don't take the time. It don't take muscles. It don't take being manly, but it should take the heart. To be pleasing in his sight. In other words, God looks at the heart of man. All this outlets, all this stuff on the outside, that don't mean nothing. It may, it may make us feel good, and that's great. But we're talking about God. He looks at that heart. Inside, he wanna know that you are his. Any questions? To God, we need to go. Any questions, any comments? We got 10 minutes. Any comments? Yes, ma'am.
and you can ask for 20 in Shelby. I like the assurance of Rochelle, but I like the, it all comes through that grace. If I, it's, 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 it's conditional that I abide in him mm -hmm. so that I can uh, have what he has uh, promised me. And, and, and within that, within that grace period, within that grace, you said that you said regardless of the crime of uh, uh, what we've done in the past, mm -hmm. that that forgiveness is there. What should have happened or could have happened, it didn't happen because of his love, because of that grace right. that he has extended toward all of us at any given period of time. We have said and we've done some things that things that were contrary to his word. But because of that grace, right. love, unconditional love, he loves us in spite of. Absolutely. He loves us in spite of. I, I like that. I like that. That, that covering. I like that. Amen. It's just a piece that I was telling about what you were saying. How God's grace, I like when you said that, even when we don't deserve it, mm -hmm. His grace and His mercy is still ever present uh, in our lives. And we have to display that with, with people too. Mm -hmm. And it takes
Help us to invite your grace, hold on to your grace, live with your grace. That, Lord, the only view you will see is a pleasing sight. And so, Lord, continue to keep this church, its leaders and its members, every word that's being spoken here and every act, God, we, let, we ask that it be an act of kindness. Let it be your mercy. And everything that this church does moving forward would be from the extent of your grace. And so, God, keep this place. God, every time these doors are open for your word, we ask, God, that you continue to bless this place. God, I pray, God, that your love shine upon them like you allow your love to shine upon me. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you. I pray, God, that I have done right in your sight. Oh, God, keep us as we leave this place. But never your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Your grace and mercy, your grace and mercy. Your grace and mercy. Your grace and mercy. Your grace and mercy. Your grace and mercy.